Let's talk about this because the Conservatives have decided to put forward an opposition motion that will be voted on Monday that says organizations that engage in non-political, non-activist work, such as feeding the homeless, helping refugees, and giving kids an opportunity to go to camp should be able to access Canada Summer Jobs funding regardless of their private convictions and regardless of whether or not they choose to sign the application attestation. Conservative MP Garnet Genus from Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan, joins me on the line now. Uh, Garnet, good to talk to you. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks, Andrew. Great to be with you. How bad has it been, the backlash that you've heard about in your riding from agencies, charities, churches, institutions that just were not comfortable even applying for funding this year? Well, there's been a significant backlash in my riding, as well as across the country. I was just uh, in the Maritimes for the last few days, Monday to Wednesday. I was in uh, Moncton, Fredericton, and Prince Edward Island. And uh, these are ridings that are held by Liberal MPs. Uh, and there's a significant backlash there from groups that I met with, uh, groups uh, such as Atlantic Baptist Housing that runs 16 pardon me, 18 housing facilities for seniors. Uh, they use this program, but will not be able to this year. I visited a group uh, called Harvest House Atlantic. Uh, they uh, provide support to people that are addressing addictions. Uh, it's a, an incredible story, the, the, the different services that they provide to people that are, that are in need. And, you know, many, these are, are, are examples of, of a phenomenon across the country where we see often faith-based charities, but lots of other charities bringing private money to bear to address significant social problems. But they do benefit from small aspects of government support, like the Canada Summer Jobs Program. And basically, these groups are going to be totally shut out this year from that uh, extra and important support that they receive as a result of this, this I think, pointless and mean-spirited policy. And it was really interesting to see how this issue compounded because at first it was a knee-jerk reaction to a bunch of Liberal MPs learning that pro-life advocacy groups had been receiving funding and they were saying, you know, we don't like the idea of this funding being received by groups that are, that are actively and willfully campaigning on political issues. I disagreed with that interpretation, but then it expanded to you have to promise that your organization's core mandate is that you support all of these things. And look, a lot of organizations likely don't even have a core mandate that even addresses these things. So to say that they specifically and explicitly do support it would be a little bit challenging. But also Mm -hmm. groups that might not do anything in the space of abortion or gay rights, they're providing day camps, they're, you know, doing other services that have nothing to do with these issues are excluded because all of a sudden there's a moral litmus test, an ideological purity test. Totally is. It's it's a values test. And the website we have up on this is stopthevaluestest.ca. It is a values test. In terms of, of, uh, Andrew, you commented on kind of the genesis of where this came from. We actually had a case of a liberal MP, Ikra Khaled in in Mississauga, uh, that through her summer jobs allocation gave a whole bunch of money to a a, a pro-life advocacy group. And this is a group that uh, uses tactics that I think a lot of people would consider uh, consider controversial. But uh, it's, it's sort of hard for me to understand why after a Liberal MP chose to fund this group, uh, that the government felt that they needed to, to, to bring down the hammer and not only uh, address a- advocacy groups, but also uh, effectively, maybe this wasn't the intent, but this is the effect of the policy, that any group that has uh, pro-life convictions but isn't isn't working on those issues at all, just wants to help people in need, help the homeless, uh, support refugees, help people dealing with addictions, uh, they're, uh, they're now being, being shut out. And, and uh, there's there's a, a a big problem with with asking people to attest to their personal values in order to access government funding it, when that government funding and, and how they're using that money actually doesn't run afoul of any policy. It's not what they're doing. It's what they personally believe that they're being targeted for. And we think that's totally unacceptable. You have put forward, or not you, but the the opposition party, the Conservative Party, has put forward the opposition motion, going to be voted on on Monday, as I understand. The government has already doubled and tripled down. What's the point at this point? The government has made its decision. There's a legal challenge afoot. Why bring this up again when you know that there's no chance the government's going to accept this? Well, the government is made up of uh, of cabinet, but as well as individual MPs who who uh, are hearing from their constituents on this issue. Uh, We know that there are are many Liberal MPs that are privately trying to send signals to groups in their community, oh, we don't really like this, Uh, you know, I'm I'm trying to find a solution. Uh, But then on Monday, those Liberal MPs are going to have to stand up and be counted either way. 
uh, they're going to have to either vote uh, with the prime minister against what they're hearing from their community, or they're going to have to stand for their community uh, and support the motion. Uh, now, there is nothing in this motion that should be objectionable to members of the government if they're serious about only wanting to deal with activist groups. Now, now uh, my view on these activist groups is the policy needs to be equal either way. Some people might not want their tax dollars going to activists on one side of a contentious issue, uh, but the same goes for any kind of activist. I don't want to see my tax dollars going to fund anti-pipeline activists either. So Yeah, I would you know, say, gonna, I would say treat the abortion activists. rights coalition the same way you treat the campaign life coalition, to treat you know the anti-pipeline people the same way you treat the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers or something like that. Yeah, if, if you have a policy on, on politics and activism that says, no, we're going to focus uh, the summer jobs funding on on things that are more service oriented, as well as on on private business. You know, I, I wouldn't have a problem with that if it was done in a fair in a fair way. But that's that's not what they've done. Uh, but, you know, if if the liberals are serious about only being concerned about the activism and political side of it, then they have no reason not to vote for our motion, because our motion specifically talks about non-political, non-activist groups who do not wish to sign the attestation. So I think we'll see the true colors of the government in the vote on Monday, as well as of individual MPs. I know right now that it's not going to be only conservatives that are voting in favor of it. We have, uh, uh, we have one member of another party, Elizabeth May, who uh, obviously not someone we agree with most of the time, uh, but who has, I think, been hearing from her constituents on this and, and signaled that she's going to vote in favor of the motion. Uh, and so we'll see with, with NDP members, with individual government members, I don't expect the cabinet to support it, uh, but... Uh, we're, we're hoping that, that people will actually do their job, which is respond to their constituents. If I'm hearing tons of feedback from people in Atlantic Canada, from people in the GTA, then I know the local MPs are hearing that feedback as well. Well, it is interesting when you talk about how MPs are kind of singing a different tune in their writings about this than they are from Ottawa. I have to point out that I've talked to at least three examples of, or I've, I've, I've spoken to people within at least three cases where the MP that represents their area has told them, okay, well, it's not really about you, so just sign it anyway. And and that's not good advice from government to, to basically tell them to lie because, well, the spirit of it is not about you. No, if their issue is with the spirit of it, not aligning with the wording of it, change the wording of it. But they've been quite indignant at the possibility that there's anything wrong in practice or even in theory about this attestation. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think some of this comes down to a, a difference about what it means to attest to something. The government is saying to people through their MPs, uh, well, we're not intending to target you, so just attest to this thing, even if you don't believe it. Um, you know, but, but if my point would be is that if, if it doesn't apply to these groups, then change the attestation. Don't require them to sign the attestation. Uh, to, to put it simply, this is, this is from a, a pastor that, that we hear from in Mississauga. He said, I, I'm being told by, by the, the MP to just check the stupid box, but if it's just a stupid box, then why is it there? Uh, just remove the box then. If that's the problem, just remove the box. And, uh, and, and this issue would be resolved. I, I think, Andrew, common ground could have been found here, could still be found here, but the government has to take seriously the concerns of, of these faith communities. And many of these organizations, by the way, received funding signed off on by their Liberal MP in the past. Uh, groups like uh, Harvest House Atlantic that I spoke about, uh, these folks had their lib- local Liberal MP sign off on funding in the past, but somehow this year it's different because of the Prime Minister's edict. Yeah, and that's the whole thing. This has been going on for years, and no one really paid any attention to it. And then you get one example that really explodes on a national level, and all of a sudden, you've got a huge drop in funding. You know what? Maybe this is how Trudeau's going to balance the budget, just scare away church groups from getting funding to hire people. Well, it's not going to help in the long term with our fiscal situation, though, because so many social challenges, whether it's addictions, homelessness, uh, supporting refugees... Uh, All of these uh, things are supported through private money, a lot of it involving the activities of faith-based organizations. These uh, these activities, this voluntary private charity, makes a big difference in addressing social problems and challenges that, frankly, would lead to an increased burden on government if they weren't there. So when you have mean-spirited policies like this, uh, that, that really are trying mm-hmm. to uh, delegitimize and marginalize private charitable organizations. The consequence is not only bad for society, but it's also going to be bad for uh, for taxpayers in the long run. Conservative MP Garnet Genus joining us on the line here. Garnet, thanks for coming on, sir. All the best. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate the opportunity. All right. Cheers.